<laughs> Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. All right. Amen. Y'all there? Yeah. Excellent. I do want to point something out. Uh, you know, this is the, the, the woman who fears the Lord. Proverbs 31. A lot of you ladies know this. We talk about, you know, be a Proverbs 31 woman and so forth and so on. I love that it's at the end of Proverbs. You know, they were saving the best for last. Amen, women? Amen. 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 All right. Let's read this. Uh, an excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you. Thank you so much for this church. Father, again, just the movement that you've provided through this church. I ask that you continue that. I ask that we get out of the way as leadership, and we allow you to do that. Father, never let our pride get in the way. Never let us stand in your way. Father, you tell us when to move, we'll move. Um, you tell us when to go forward, we'll go forward. It's one thing I can say about this church, uh, and it's not just the leadership, Father. It's so many in this congregation. We'll have that obedience. We'll do what you ask. Uh, Father, we've got some brave people in this church, and, and all we want to do is build your kingdom. So, Father, again, just continue to pour those things on us. Challenge us. Make us tough. Father, humble us each and every day. Uh, it's the only way we're going to become the church that I know that you want us to be, which is your church. Uh, Father, in this moment, uh, you've given me a sermon uh, to add to for this series of Warrior Family. And uh, Father, first of all, thank you again for letting me preach this series. I have thoroughly enjoyed this and uh, always do. Um, but Father, the words that you've given me for this are going at the wives. And Father, I just need every wife in this room, Father, to open their hearts, open their minds. Father, take you in. I ask that you pierce the hearts of every single wife in this room today and the husbands. Uh, Father, they need to understand this as well. So, Father, in this moment, I'm asking that you anoint me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Father, that you take all of my pride, um, anger, I've had some anger this week, um, distractions. Uh, Father, I ask that you take all that away from me. You cast it into the sea. And Father, you replace it with your love, your wisdom, and your boldness today. I ask these things in your name. Help us to love, laugh, and forgive. Amen. All right. <clears throat> today we're going to continue our series on uh, Warrior Family. Uh, last week we talked about what it took to be a warrior husband. You know, a lot of you men... <laughs> First of all, there's a lot more people in here this Sunday than were last Sunday. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to move on, okay? But, but for you men, honestly, you husbands uh, that were not here last Sunday, if you get a chance, go on our YouTube page, watch that from last week. Uh, that sermon alone literally changed my life, okay, years ago. And uh, I know it's, 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 it's definitely produced a lot of movement through the men of our church in the last two years and then last Sunday as well. Uh, so I highly recommend it, man, if, if you get a chance. In fact, no, forget that. Get a chance. Go watch it. Okay? Amen? Excellent. This week, uh, we're going <laughs> to, since I'm a equal opportunities person, we're going to preach on the wives this week. We're going to talk about what it takes to be a warrior wife. Some of you ladies may not have had the best role model growing up. I discussed this last week with the men. You may not have had a mother in your home. You may have had a mother, and she may not have been a good mother. But the thing is, is I can't take anything away from your past, but I can help you replace in the future. We're going to talk about today what you're supposed to be, what you can be from here forward as a wife and as a true woman of God. Amen? Uh, for those of you single people, again, I said this last week, I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all weren't here last week, so some of you single people, some of you younger ladies and younger men, and you're like, why am I even listening to this today? This does not have anything to do with me. Well, it gives you an opportunity to see what to shoot for. Take notes, young men. This is the type of wife you are going to be looking for if you want a godly woman as your wife. You young girls, take notes. This is what the godly man is going to look for for a godly wife. Take notes, guys. For those of you who are single, this does not count you out whatsoever. <laughs> now, before I get started, I need all the ladies in here to understand, and, and, and I need them to know something, okay? 
Are all you ladies listening? I didn't hear you. I, I need more than that. Are all you? Okay. Your pastor loves you. Do not attack the messenger. Okay? Is that understood? I did not hear enough. Is that understood? That's, I still didn't hear enough, but we're going to move on. Our God is a God of order. He has an order of every single thing that he creates. Everything that he puts together, there's an order. Okay? In the order of the marriage covenant, he actually has a chain of command. Okay? That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I want to look at Corinthians 11, 3, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, please. I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. So what this verse is showing us is the order God has put into place for his marriage covenant. I want to show this umbrella picture. So you have the umbrella. You have God holding the umbrella. Amen? Underneath that, you have Christ, you have the husband, you have the wife, and then you have the children. This is the order of how the chain of command should be in a godly home. This is the order. Some of you ladies are already not happy. You're looking at me kind of mean. We're going to move on. <laughs> Some ladies even call this a creation issue, but people that fight this issue, they need to understand if you're fighting the issue, you're fighting creation so in essence, you are actually fighting the creator. I need y'all to catch this. This is extremely important moving forward today, guys. The, the, the order that God put into place for the family and the home is not about equality of people. It's not about the equality of men and women, okay? It is about the function of the family. The function of the family. It's the same way with the Trinity. You know, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is equal to God, but God's function is ahead of Jesus. I want to show you all this biblically. I want to go to Hebrews 10, 9. Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. Now, I want you all to I want y'all understand. You pastor made a mistake, and I caught it this morning, but it's too late to change the slide. Okay, so this actually should not be in red. Okay, this was actually Paul saying what Jesus said. But Jesus did say this. Behold, I have come to you, or come to do your will, O God. So what y'all need to catch here, Jesus submitted to God. He's following the function of God's plan in ordained order. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity. Equal. All three equal but there's a function that they have to follow. The verse before this said that Christ, God is the head of Christ. Jesus himself is saying here that I came to do my Father's will. He is submitting to his Father. Are y'all following me here? Equal, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, equal. But then there's a functioning order. God is the God of order, always an order and everything creates, that you have to follow. Y'all following me so far? Christian head nods. I need some. Excellent. I will. Yes, ma'am. I ain't going to quit. I need you guys to catch this. Every woman is equal to her husband as a being, but she is not equal to her husband in God's function of the marriage covenant. Understood? Did you talk about that? Great. We'll move on. We're going to continue on this. I'm going to stay on this for a while. It's the same as it is in business, guys. I mean, I'll give you an example, just my business in particular. I'm the owner of Micah's Jewelers. I have a regional manager who goes to all three locations, and then I have a store manager at each location, and then I have associates at each location. We all answer to somebody, okay? Even I do. My wife is really the boss. <laughs> but it's the same in business, right? It's the same in the church. It's the exact same in the church. We as a governing body, us as the church, all equal. We are all equal. We walk in here, we put our pants on just like the other person. Amen? Amen. Ain't nobody in here better than anybody else. Is that understood? Amen. Okay. So, so what I'm getting at here, the church, equal. But there's a functioning order of leadership. You have pastors and elders. You have deacons. You have others in leadership. But we're all the same. 
but in God's order, there's a different rank. Follow me so far? Some of you ladies may want to step out of God's order and be the leader of the marriage covenant. You need to know, just like the church, with leadership comes more accountability. I want to go to James 3.1. Not many should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. Now, this is no different with the husband, guys. Just as in the church, myself, Bojo, the elders, Mikey, Cheryl, we are going to be judged differently when we die and go to heaven. I've, I've told a lot of y'all this, I think, before, but when y'all die and you go to heaven and you see there's two lines, okay? There's, there's a line with people and there's a line with a bunch of pastors and leaders. Stay out of that line. <laughs> You're going to get judged a lot harsher over there, okay? But that's the truth, though. That's the biblical truth because we are held accountable in God's order. It's no different with the husband. The husband is the spiritual leader of that household. God put him in place. He will be judged differently than his children, than his wife, because he is the leader of that household. So for you ladies that, that, that think you want to be in that position, I think about it. You'll be judged differently. You just put all the pressure on the husband. Like, that's what we're there for. Okay? I don't know why y'all laughing at that. That's messed up. <laughs> it's not funny. We find the perfect biblical example of this in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, you know, you've got Adam and Eve. You know, Eve, you know, finds the, the, the fruit on the tree and, and the serpent, which I always call slick, which is Satan, comes up, talks her into taking a bite out of it and so forth, goes to Adam. Adam takes a bite out of the fruit, not supposed to eat the fruit. God said don't eat the fruit. It's the only thing he told him to do. Only thing he told him to do is don't eat the fruit. Yeah. It's just like, like it's like our children. You know, I tell Caroline, like, don't do that. She does it. I don't understand, you know. But, but that's, what, that's what they did. The one thing, the one thing he told them not to do, they did it, okay. So here's what I need you to get, though, from the whole story. We all know the story. But here's what you need to grab from the story. And I want to go pick it up. This is, uh, let's see, this is uh, Genesis 3, 9. God goes and looks for him. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? He didn't say, where are you, Adam and Eve? Where are you, Adam? You the man. You the husband. You screwed up. I'm coming to you. You're supposed to be the spiritual leader. There's two things I need to get you from the story, ladies. Number one, this is proof that it's the man that God is going to go to. He is the spiritual leader. If it's a godly man and he's leading his house the right way, that's who he's going to, okay? And I'll be honest with you, if he ain't godly and he ain't leading the house the right way, he's still going to have to answer to him, amen? amen? Number two, and this is what I get from this story, and I need you wives to take this today. A lot of people say it was Eve's fault for the whole situation, right? I believe it was the man's fault because he allowed it. But I still need you to catch this. Adam was answering for his wife's mistake. He took the blame. He had to handle the blame. And I'll tell you something else I love about it. He didn't go off and say, well, God, it's your fault. You're the one that sent me this crazy woman. <laughs> he took the blame. Remember that, ladies. When you make mistakes, I need you to know something. That falls on your husband. God's going to look to him. And say, there's a reason why she did that. What did you do wrong? Where were you not leading? Where did you ignore her? Where did you not pay attention to her needs? I'm sorry, I'm getting back on men. Let me get back over to the women. <laughs> back over to the women. I promise, guys, I'm sorry. I wasn't going to be there. I promise, I promise. So ladies, like it or not, if your husband is a warrior husband, like we talked about last week, you have to let him lead. Let him lead. I see this all the time. So many times I'll counsel a couple, and the, and, 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 the, and the wife, the woman, is trying to overpower the man. Now, we're going to get into this in a little bit. There are ways that that's 
biblically somewhat okay. We're going to get there. But ladies, what I need you to understand, there's so many times that I do sit down with couples and there's a godly man leading that household. And that wife is being prideful. You know, Micah, I'm smarter than him. I have a better job. I make more money. I scored better on the ACT, whatever. (laughs) Guys, that doesn't matter. God didn't call you to lead the household. He called your husband to lead the household. Ladies, let your husbands lead. If he's a godly man, let him lead. Do you know how many women in this world would love to have a godly man lead in their house? Amen. Amen. Let them lead, ladies. Don't step on those toes. If you remember last week, we discussed the biblical commands for your husbands. Uh, Is there one job to love you like Christ loves the church? The Bible gives you, ladies, two commands. The first one is that dreaded word that some of you absolutely despise to hear. Ephesians 5.22. You wives must submit. That's in bold. Submit to your husband's leadership. To your husband's leadership. Doesn't say lead to your husband. It says his leadership. Y'all follow me? If he ain't leading, you ain't got to be submissive. Y'all feel me? Submit to your husband's leadership in the same way you submit to the Lord. I love that verse. Me and y'all need to have that memorized. The problem is the world has destroyed this word submission. Submission is a beautiful thing, guys. It is a beautiful thing. The word means to place oneself under authority. It, is, it means protection. Protection. It doesn't mean you have to do what your husband tells you to do all the time. That's not what that means. That's not what that means. Good Lord, if we lived in that world, my home would be all screwed up. Security. <laughs> but guys, here's the thing. I mean, seriously, it's um, God. This world has really destroyed that world. Uh, that word. I mean, they, they've really, really destroyed it. Um, you're submissive to God. Husband submissive to God. You're just falling in line with the order that God wants you to be submissive to. And here's the thing, y'all don't think, okay, if you're submissive to your husband that's a, that's a good leader, it's a good leader, leads the house the right way, okay, and you know he's submissive to God, then you're just being submissive to God. You feel me? When it comes to God's function in the family, wives, you are to place yourselves under the husband. But hold on, I want you to look at verse 23. We're going to go one more verse, Ephesians 5, 23. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. (sighs) Let me check something. How's Christ lead the church? Bam! That's what I'm talking about. Love. Love. God is love. Christ is God. Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So therefore, he leads the church with love. One word describes... Hey, go back one verse for me, Nick. Thank you, Father, for giving me this. Okay, submit to your wives. You submit to your husband's love. That's how you're supposed to lead the church. That's how Christ leads the church. That's how us men are supposed to lead the household. And guess what, women, ladies, wives, if we're doing that, if we're loving you, if we're taking care of you, and we're being a spiritually godly man, and we're leading the house the right way, and we're loving you, submit. And you know what's cool about it is if your husband's a true godly man, he doesn't even look at it as submission. He looks at it as love. This verse is also where it explains, go back to 23 for me, Nick, sorry, I got you jumping everywhere. This verse also explains, 
You are only to be submissive to your husband when he is submissive to God. Yes, you ladies have to be submissive. You have to do that for your husband. But I want you to catch this. That submission comes with boundaries. This means your husband cannot demand anything from you that Christ wouldn't demand from the church. Ladies, y'all should not feel like a dish rag. Y'all should not feel like a second class citizen. Again, this submission, this, this role of husband, it comes with boundaries. And abuse is not anywhere inside of that. It is outside of those boundaries. The moment that your husband steps outside of those boundaries, he's no longer a husband. He's just a man. I don't even want to call him a boy. I don't mind saying that. I said this last week, I'll say it again. Your pastor and leadership of this church, we will not tolerate abuse on women or children. And if it is being done, please come to us. Let us help you. We can fix that problem. God can fix that problem. We'll just be the vessel. And I need you to understand something. By bringing that to our attention, I don't think we, we're fixing to go on attack. We're, we're going to do the same thing that Christ does to the church and the way he leads it. We're going to love on you. We're going to love on the one that's doing the abusing. We're going to teach, but we're going to love on them with teaching and, and some church discipline. That's biblical. That's still loving, okay? One thing I've learned, and I've learned this over the last couple of weeks, every situation that a church goes through, every single situation, regardless of it being leadership or not leadership, the family, whoever it may be, every moment, every single moment, as a pastor and as leadership of this church, we have to look at it as a teaching opportunity. I'm not going to scold you. We're going to teach you. If that's going on in a household that you know about, we need to know about it so we can help. The husband, the position of husband is an anointed position by God. But again, he puts those boundaries on it, guys. That anointed position, uh, I'll get there. Now, in saying all this, ladies, uh, you must submit. Again, that, that's what gives your, if you submit to your godly husband, that is the key to a healthy, godly family. I know some men in here today want to know what happens to the wife if they are unsubmissive. I heard somebody say one time, the only difference between a mean, bad attitude, unsubmissive wife, and a pit bull is lipstick. <laughs> somebody said, what? You'll catch it. Just go back, rewind it, and watch it again. Let's see what the Bible thinks and says about an unsubmissive wife. I've got two verses I want to read, Proverbs 27, 15, and 21, 9. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as constant dripping on a rainy day. Y'all didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? You didn't know that, did you? You didn't want to know it was in there. It is better to live alone in the corner of an attic. <laughs> God's got a sense of humor. Than with a quarrelsome wife. Amen? Amen. Yeah, that was deep voices. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, I don't know about y'all. My attic's scary, man. I don't even want to live up there. But listen, sometimes, you know what? That's what I'm going to do next time. Next time Amanda gets mad and, and she gets on me, which is very seldom, hush, 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 it's very seldom she gets mad at me. And most times it's my fault. Most of the time it's my fault. But it, if this one time it ain't my fault, I'm going to lower that dang ladder and I'm going to go up in the attic and just sit there for a while. <laughs> like, I'm going to do that. And she's going to be like, where are you at? And I said, he said in the Bible, go sit in your attic. I'm going to tell her that. <laughs> I ain't running from you. I'm in the attic. That's what he told me to do. <laughs> For those of you watching online that didn't hear that, Mikey said she's just going to shut the door behind you. I like that. 
You know, I'm going to tell you something, Mike. You know, we've been talking about getting a, like, a, like a, a microphone in here for the congregation. You're going to have to act right if we do that, okay? <laughs> yeah, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> the second command the Bible gives you wives is to honor and respect your husband. That's right. Men, that's right. Honor and R-E-S-P-E-C-T. I'm going to tell y'all something. Respect as a man, that's huge. You ladies need love. We need respect. That's just the truth of it. You know why? Because we're high on ourselves. I ain't going to lie to y'all. Us men, we, we need to be lifted up. We need to be encouraged. We're, we're kind of needy. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to one. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Corinthians eleven seven. 7. For man is made in God's image and reflects God's glory, and woman reflects man's glory. The word glory or to glorify someone means to make someone look good. Man's job is to make God look good. Woman's job is to make man look good. You see, you ladies, you are to glorify your husband by honoring his position. I want to explain. I, remember that husband, again, it's not a person. It's an anointed position by God. So when you honor and respect your husband, you again are in turn honoring and respecting your Father in heaven. Let's go to Ephesians 5.33. So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Each man must love his wife as he loves himself. You know, I said earlier we're kind of high on ourselves. But again, wives, if we're loving you, it says you must, you must respect us if we're loving you. Again, if it's outside those boundaries, that's a whole different ball game. But in this church, I have a feeling, not a feeling, because I know most of you men in this church. We've got a lot of godly men in this church. A lot of really strong godly men. They want to practice. Ladies, if they're loving you, let them lead. I can't stress that enough. Respect means to hold, uh, excuse me, to hold up to a high esteem or regard. Again, you know, you ladies need love. We need respect. I get this a lot. Uh, you know, Mike, I, I do respect. I do respect my husband. I'm not receiving the love I feel that I deserve or I want him to lead, but he just won't lead. Ladies, I hear this a lot, a lot. The Bible tells us what to do, 1 Peter 3, 1 through 2. In the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands then, even if some refuse, talking about husbands, to obey the good news, talking about the Word, the Bible, God, Jesus, amen, your godly wives will speak to them, or excuse me, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. That is truth. How many men in this room, not a show of hands. Well, you can if you want to. How many men in this room, it took a godly woman to get you where you are today? This is what you ladies are supposed to do. I, I don't think that he'd have put this in the Bible if he didn't expect this to happen. Y'all follow me? This verse is telling you wives not to scold or belittle your husband. It's telling you to lead by example, lead by actions, and not words. That's hard. I know it's hard. I want, I want to say this. If, it's really hard when they're not a godly man. 
but I want to point this out. If you have a godly husband, if you have a warrior husband like we talked about last week, and he makes a mistake, don't, don't scold him. Don't bring him down. Because if he's a true godly man, if he's a true warrior husband, he's beating himself up already. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you. I'm, a lot, I'm my toughest critic by far. I'm going to beat myself up if I make a mistake, especially towards my family. So, ladies, that's the worst time for you to go in and scold your husband. Don't come in and say, I told you so. That's the worst thing we ever want to hear. Don't say, we to I told you so. No, come in and say, baby, I love you. I honor you. And I got your back. Yeah, you may not have made the right decision, but I agreed with it because I'm your wife. I know you seek God, and I'm following you. I am submissive to you as a godly husband because I know you're submissive to God. And even though it may look like a mistake, God can take what's bad and make it good. Lift us up. Encourage us, ladies. We need it. I'm telling you, we're needy. We need encouragement. That's the main thing that we need. I'll tell you that right now. I say respect, and, and I know that's what the Bible says, so we'll put that there. But I'm going to say that 1B is encouragement. My, my wife today, uh, <laughs> she sent me a text. I was struggling this morning. I've had a rough week. It's been a rough week. Um, just a lot of stuff going on, like anybody else, right? W when you have a rough week as a pastor, uh, and, and Bojo knows what I'm talking about, it, it, it's hard to put a sermon together. Uh, it's hard to concentrate. And then Sunday comes along, and you got the sermon, and, you, and you're ready to go preach it, but you got all these distractions, all these things in the back of your head. My wife today sends me a text. She says, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I know you're going to kill the sermon. That little bit of encouragement, guys, that's what I needed. And coming from her means a lot more than coming from one of your brothers. A godly man, a godly husband, we, <laughs> our number one concern is what does our wife think of us? I want to please my wife. I want to please my family. Listen, I love you brothers now. I love y'all. Mikey, I love you. But I don't give a darn what you think over my wife. Amen? She's a whole lot prettier than you too. Most of y'all know the story of Beauty and the Beast. And, you know, a lot of times you ladies, y'all come across a man and, you know, he's, he's rough and he's tough and he's gruff. And I talked about this last week with, with the men. There's no need to be that way. We are to be vulnerable. We are to be loving but, you know, in Beauty and the Beast, again, I know all y'all know this story, but, you know, you've got Belle who finds the beast. The beast is mean, blah, blah, blah. But all of a sudden, she starts to honor, respect, and love him, and he turns into a prince. You know, there's a lot of men in here, probably beasts. <laughs> but, ladies, if you love them, and you respect them, and you honor them, he may be a prince. Deep down in there, he may be there. In fact, he, he is there. But, but you got to do those things. You got to love on him. Bring the prince out of your beast. That's right. Dang straight. I've got a letter that I want to read to you guys that sums up what true submission from a wife to a godly husband is. <clears throat> And then I'll close it out. Being a submissive wife is a gift you give your husband. And a true gift is given without expecting anything in return. We're not forced to give this gift. But God chooses, excuse me, but choose to because God has called us to do so. It's not out of the duty or to follow a set of rules, but out of love. We choose every day to follow God by willingly giving honor and respect to our husband without keeping score. Thank God. 
Submitting to God can be a lot easier than submitting to our husbands. We easily let God take control of our lives. We allow God to lead, excuse me, we allow God to lead the way and direct our path. We praise him, we thank him, we do things for him just because we love him. What if we submitted to our husbands the way we submit to the Lord? How different would our marriage be? How different would our household be? You can choose to be submissive, or choose, excuse me, you can choose to be a submissive wife by praying for your husband daily, allowing him to make decisions, allowing him to make bad decisions, and it says there will be plenty, having self-control over your words and actions, encourage and lift him up. Do not talk negative of him in front of others. Humble yourself every day. And most importantly, make sure you have submitted to God so you can fully submit to your husband. By being submissive, you are allowing your husband to be the spiritual leader of the household. You are helping to mold him into the man God wants him to be. When your husband is given the room to make decisions with, full, with your full support, it grows his confidence in himself and in God. It allows him to make decisions knowing you will show grace and mercy. A godly man is the, pro, is the pro, byproduct of a submissive wife. That's good. I'm going to read that again. A godly man is the byproduct of a submissive wife. Our culture defines submiss submissive wives in a negative way. We all eventually submit to something. Will you give in and submit to the ways of the world, or will you submit to God and your husband? Signed, Amanda Harp. says, P.S., my husband is hot. <laughs> he, is a, he is a beautiful man. <sighs> she wrote that letter two years ago. I read it the first time I preached this sermon. I hadn't read it since until this morning. And Bojo walked in. I was back there crying. He's like, what's wrong with you? I said, hush, just leave me alone. Without true submission, guys, I need y'all to catch this, okay, and I'm going to close this out. Without true submission, because of the submission of a, of a wife, this church is sitting here, you're sitting here, you're in this room because of the submission of a wife. When I went to my wife and told her, when I went to Amanda and said, God's told me that we're, we need to start a church, you know, first she called me crazy, you know, she said a few other choices. No, I'm just kidding. She didn't. She's really sweet. But guys, it, it took her a couple days, but I remember her coming to me and saying, this is God. This is God. Y'all have heard the test. Some of you heard the testimony. God put her through a few things, showed her a few things, and she did. She realized your husband is following me. Because of a submissive wife, we have a church. That's the power of true submission. It's not an evil thing. Do y'all understand this? Submission is great. If you submit in the right way, ladies, wives, if you submit in the right way, God can move so much more. Submit to your godly husbands. Allow him to make these decisions, allow him to work, because if he's that godly man, again, God's working through him. If you stop your husband from doing it, you're stopping God. Do you follow me?